So uh, we see why we need to analyze this in terms of which domain analyze, right? Including the system, including the signal. So why we need to take this trouble to look at the signals in the time domain and the domain and go through those are tedious mathematics. Because this technique, this kind of uh, signal and processing technique is going to be very useful in communication. And not just limited in the communication. Signal processing technology has been widely used in a lot of areas. Okay, in multimedia, in communication, in control, even in the uh, microelectronics. Okay. So in this module, we are going to use communication system as an example. Okay, this is one area uh, signal processing technology has been intensively used. All right. Okay, so to see this, we must know what is the communication system does and what's the problem we have or what's the problem we're facing in the communication system. How the signal processing technology can solve this problem or can help in this solving this problem. All right. Okay, first, a typical communication system is like this. We have a source, okay, the source can be any kind of signal, can be voice, can be video, can be anything, all right? So the source has a message sent to the destination, okay? It must go through some channel, of course, all right? But before it's sent to the message to the channel, it must be proper coded, proper coded, Proper coding means that how you're going to process the original message such that it is suitable to transmit in this channel. For example, we try to talk to our friends in another country. Okay, you can't just shout to your friends. Your friends never receive what your message, right? So we have to convert our voice signal into electrical signal. Okay, and send it into a proper channel. For example, the wireless communication channel or internet. So, at your friend's side, they can detect this signal from the channel and convert it back to a signal such that human can understand. That means a voice signal. So, those are signal processing. Okay. No matter how you recover your signal, no matter how you transport your signal in a proper form such that you're suitable for transmission and also you suppress the interference. Okay, and on the other hand, how you can detect your signal from the channel. Originally the channel is quite noisy because people are sharing the channel and the channel itself is generating some noise. Okay, so the received signal is going to be very noisy. How you can do the detection is such that you can maximize your signal to noise ratio at this receiver end. Then you can from the deck signal, you can recover the voice signal and minimize the distortion. So those are the applications of signal processing technology. Okay. A more detailed signal is like this. A detailed system is like this. So original signal transducer into electrical signal. Okay. So can be a source coding. Source coding. Then the source coding signal must is, is called phase band signal. Okay, this is a steer phase band signal. This phase band signal must be processed properly such that the signal sent out not suitable in the channel. Okay, EM waveform in this case. All right, because low uh, phase band signal generally cannot propagate in the long distance. If you want to send your signal in the long distance, you have to Modulate it into your high frequency band. Modulate your high frequency band has two purposes actually. One to send it in long distance. The other one actually to try to avoid collision of different communication paths, as you will see later. All right. Then at a receiver, because what you can see is just the channel itself at the receiver side. Okay, the receiver will detect a useful signal. It is your signal the receiver wants to pick up not the others, right? So you need to tune to your proper bandwidth first and detect the signal and process the signal and recover the signal such that it can be understood by human. So 
In this process, we finish the communication. We pass our message to the receiver. How we can do this, we have to leverage signal processing. Okay, leverage signal processing. The reason why we need to apply signal processing is because the interference in the channel is turned due to other users in the channel. Okay, well, pollute your original signal such that the received signal generates a distorted version of the original signal. So you have to process this signal, whatever method, to minimize the interference. Okay, so how we can mapping those concepts into signal processing we are talking about now. We look at two applications, okay? As we later will see. Okay, just now we talk about point to point communication. That means there's only one person or uh, one pair are using the channel. But practical cases like this, there are multiple people sharing the channel. They're sharing the channel. Okay. So if multiple people are talking at the same time, same location, it tells us that nobody can understand each other. The signal everybody receives actually becomes a gamma signal. It's useless at all. Because you were affected or even polluted by the other signals. Tell us that nobody can understand each other. So we won't, we don't want this happen. Because in this case, there's no accuracy at all. There's no accuracy at all. Because we cannot understand each other, right? So some of you may ask, to solve this problem, why not we divide the time slot? We divide time slot. Let's say we have time slot, even slot and all slot. Okay? So let the, the pair one communicate using the even slot. Pair two use the odd slot. This can solve the problem. Yes, you can. But this solution will reduce the efficiency of the communication. Means that in a given time period, only one pair do the communication. Actually, this is not, not optimal case. This is not, not an optimal case, according to channel theory. Channel theory tells us people can share the channel. Means that they can send the same signal at the same time, same location. As long as you have a proper signal processing technology, you still can receive the, the, the signal correctly. Even there are multiple people are communicate at the same time. So the high efficiency way is to do the simultaneous communication. All right. But this will bring some problem. This will bring some problem. Interference. Okay, see interference. Okay, so to make sure the communication is successful and high efficiency, we need to apply these two technologies. First one, plan the spectrum to avoid two communication occurring in the same frequency same, uh, same frequency band and same time and same location in this room, for example. Only one person is talking there, and then people can understand. If there are more than one person are talking, you can understand nobody can understand each other. All right? The other one, minimize the cross interference about neighbor channel. Just now, we try to move in the different people, their spectrum to a different band, right? By using the modulation. But still, these two bands may have some cross interference. Okay, they may interfere with each other. So try to suppress the signal. Let me restrict your signal in your band. You don't extend your signal to the other people's band. Okay? This technology is called filtering. That's why we are talking about filtering design in the next part. Okay? In the chapter two, we will talk about one uh, application of modulation, which is amplitude modulation, all right? So just for these two applications, we can see signal processing is quite, actually is quite useful in communication, all right? We haven't talked about source coding yet. We, we haven't talked about suppressed noise yet. We haven't talked about signal detection yet, okay? Each of this actually is a big topic in communication. Okay, we just look at those two simple problems. How to share the spectrum by multiple people. Okay.
Okay, so we have this view from modulation and filter. Okay, we we'll look at the filter design first. Uh, before we go to the filter design, maybe we look at the principle, how to do the modulation, all right? Yeah. Assume the Fourier transform pair XT and XN. These are two Fourier transform pairs. Uh, this are one Fourier transform pair, all right? So, if we multiply this xt with the exponential function, exponential complex function with very high producing fc, so it means that fc is very high producing compared with the bandwidth of xt. Okay, so the resulting Fourier transform of this signal is going to be this one. So it's not big D already, right? We know that this is a frequency translation property of Fourier transform. Remember? Right? Yeah, it's very famous for your uh, translation from the Okay, so what's the meaning of this one? What's the meaning of this one? Compare with this. Let's say for this function, its frequency band is from 0 to 4k. Then what's the meaning of this one? Let's say fc now is 100k. What's the relation between this one and this one? If you look at the empty spectrum of these two signals. You are actually, you are actually shifting the signal, the spectrum, all right? To center at FC now. If this one has a bandwidth of 4 kHz from 0 to 4 k. Then you will shift it to center at 100. From 100 to 104, right? 104. If you consider the negative part, if you consider it as a symmetric spectrum, then the spectrum of this signal is going to be from 96 to 104. Okay? Remember? This is the cost you have to pay for modulation. You have to double the bandwidth actually. Okay? So, in this way, you are shifting the original bandwidth, base band signal to a high frequency band. If there are other people come in, they still come in the base band, you can shift this guy to another frequency band, such that there's no frequency overlap. If two signals, their spectrum overlap each other. At the receiving end, how can you distinguish them? There's no way to distinguish this, right? Only way to solve this one, you allocate these two signals or shift these two signals into different frequency bands. Later, you apply a filter. Just extract user one or user two. All right? Okay, uh, here's the proof of this property, but I, I don't think it's important. Okay, I just simply show you how we get this result. Okay, for complete. Okay. So the link between these two signals is quite important. What's the meaning of these two? Okay, from here to here. What's, what happens here? It's just shift the spectrum into a high frequency band. This is quite important. Okay. Now, in the real signal, we don't have this kind of E base power J 2 pi C at all. We don't have this kind of signal actually. What we have is the cosine signal. What we have is a sine signal. Okay, but we know that this complex exponential function is linked with cosine and sine with using the Euler formula, right? Remember? Okay, so how can we find the Fourier transform of this signal? How can we count? How can we find the Fourier transform of this signal? Again, use Euler formula. Okay, this cosine two pi c t can be expressed as a composition of two exponential functions. Again, right? Use the same technology. Okay, then it becomes x t times e raised power j two pi f c t plus e raised power minus j two pi f c t divided by two. Okay. Yeah, then for each of them, you can find the corresponding term. X minus F 
minus Fc and Xf plus Fc. Okay, you have two copies. One located at the positive, the other one located at the negative. And we know that negative is just for analytical purpose. Doesn't make sense to us. Right. Yeah. Okay, so this signal has a bandwidth of B. Okay, this is bandwidth of B. Alright. Then Xc times cosine 2 Xct, we got two terms. Two terms. This term corresponding to this one. Okay. This term corresponding to this one. Alright. When we talk about bandwidth for a base band signal, we're not talking about from negative frequency to positive frequency here, right? We just, just consider positive frequency. That means when we say the frequency band of this signal is B, means from here to here to B. Okay? Not from here to here. Alright? Because there's no physically there's no negative frequency at all. Okay? So bandwidth this one is just B. However, however, if we look at this one, what do we get? What's the bandwidth of this signal? 2 p. All right, 2 p. Okay, so by using the modulation, we solve the problem of spectrum overlap. Okay, because once I move this spectrum to a high frequency band, the original frequency band here is empty. No people are using this one anymore. If another user come in, you can use this base band here. So I can avoid the frequency overlap, right? Am I right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but the cost I have to pay is that I have to double the frequency band compared to the base band signal. I have to use, use two feet to send out my voice signal. Okay, so now, generally, human voice, the majority of the energy located in frequency from zero to four k. Okay, let's say the voice signal is 4 kHz, bandwidth is 4 kHz, all right? If I want to modulate this signal to a high frequency band, so what are the benefits of this modulated signal? It's going to be 8K, right? 8K hertz. Yeah, very good. Okay, are you okay with this one? All right? Are you okay with this one? Do you, have, do you know how to do this? How to find a point transform for this one? Are you okay with this? All right, good. <coughs> okay, so we know that generally for modulation, we multiply the new signal with a very high frequency signal, sinusoid. Okay, FC generally is much greater than the bandwidth of signal. Okay, much greater than the bandwidth of signal. Then it will shift the spectrum of this signal to a high frequency band, very high, yeah. such that there's no overlap of the modulated signal with the base band anymore. So, perfect case is like this: if there are multiple people are talking the base band, so I will shift the first user to here, and the second user to even higher frequency band, third user even higher. So this is called spectrum. Planning, spectrum planning. Okay, we are planning the spectrum in such a way that there's no overlap between different user pairs, such that everybody can communicate with a high accuracy. Okay. One example is the TV signal. Okay, the analog TV signal. General, a typical analog TV signal is like this. Okay, there are some kind of a six. With a bandwidth of six megahertz, or the other type, they have eight megahertz. Okay, but in Singapore, I think that you people are using six megahertz bandwidth for analog TV signal. Okay, so in TV signal, there are different components. Okay, so if you don't if, if you don't know it, it's fine. You just need to know that the bandwidth for a TV signal is six megahertz in Southeast Asia. That means for each channel each channel or each program, they must use six makers to transmit its signal. No matter it's the base band or high frequency band. Okay. 
package name. If two TV programs are transmitting in a baseband, that means they have signal overlap and this is band from zero to eight k uh, from zero to six megahertz. So what's the result? So what happens? It happens like this. You can you can see the video from channel eight. Then you can hear the voice from channel five. Maybe. Mm. Have you have you met this kind of situation before? No. No. Okay. Now you guys are quite quite lucky because in my time when I was young, <laughs> <laughs> actually I'm, I'm quite old. Right? It just looks young. I'm forty. I'm forty one years old. Right? Uh, when I was young at home, uh, this kind of problem happened very frequently. The reason is because at that time the the receive device is not very good, so it will cross. They will introduce a lot of cross interference. Okay, that's why. So, which means that we cannot transmit two TV program in the same frequency band. Otherwise, no people can receive that. Because the interference, the mutual interference. So what? How we can solve this problem? We try to modulate different program into different channel, such that they won't overlap each other. They won't overlap each other. That means, okay, for the first program, channel five, I allocate a frequency band from one hundred megahertz to one hundred and six megahertz. Okay, the other one. Maybe located at 106 to 112 megahertz. So there's no overlap between these two spectrum. Okay, this will solve our problem. Alright? So this will give you the spectrum planning in Singapore. Okay, give you a whole picture of this. How the spectrum are used. You see, all the way from 3K, 3K hertz all the way to 300 gigahertz. It's very crowded here, especially for this band. You see. It's very crowded. That means the spectrum actually is already very, it's already very expensive here. People are uh, make use of the spectrum for different purposes. So, suppose you want to set up a radio station in Singapore. You want to send some message to Singapore. What happens? You have to pay for it. You have to pay the government. I want to ban this bandwidth. I want to do something with this bandwidth. Then the government tell you, okay, you need to pay for it. Especially for this band, you need to pay a very high price. Then why the benefit you want to use? The more money you want to, you need, you need to pay for it. That's the first thing. Second thing, the government tells you, you must limit your signal in this given band. You cannot emit your signal in different band. Otherwise, you're going to interfere with other users. This is not allowed. If you violate this rule, you're going to be fined for it. Okay, this is very strict. That's why in Singapore, you need to be careful. Whenever you want to emit some signal in N, whether your signal is legal or not, if it is illegal, illegal in sense of it's not in sense of a content, all right. I'm not saying about you are sending illegal content. I'm talking about whether your signal sent out will interfere with other users. If this is fun, you, you are interfering with other users. You are going to be fined by the government again because those users, use, for example, this slot, uh, actually it's not slot. This particular band. The user of this woman already paid a lot of money to come to use this band. Okay. <coughs> Alright. Uh, some examples like this one. This is the FM band, you see. You see the frequency is from 86 to one, 108 megahertz. So even this this frequency band is very small. That actually you see that there are a lot of radio stations in the right? Like 99.5, right? 99.3 in this band, right? FM radio. 
This fan is the TV station in Singapore. Actually, this fan is allocated for the TV station in Southeast Asia, not just Singapore. Not just Singapore. Okay. In the long run, this uh, analog TV program is going to shift to a digital pro program. And its frequency is going to shift to this fan. Okay. Because the digital signal transmission will save some bandwidth. That's why you see the, the bandwidth here is lesser than this one. Yeah. Okay, so this is the planning of the spectrum in Singapore. Okay, whenever you want to send some signal, you better check it. You better check with the IDA. No matter in the, if you want to do it yourself or in the company. Okay, try to check it. Whether it's legal to send your signal into the air. Alright? Also, if you design, if you want to design some uh, radio station or some, some signal, transmit signal, uh, some, some system to transmit signal, you need to think about it. You need to minimize the spectrum you're going to use, such that it will save your cost. Okay? If you use a wider spectrum, definitely you will pay more. Pay more for it, right? Okay. So here is the question. Why they are called Channel 5, Channel 8 in Singapore? You know? It's very famous in Singapore, there are Channel 5, Channel 8, right? Of course, there are some other channels. Why is it called Channel 5, Channel 8? Have you think about this? Especially those are local, local students here. Have you think about this? Because this is not tradition. In other countries, every TV station or TV program got a name. It's like, for example, in China. Every province or every city that got a TV station, they call it, they use the name of this city instead of use a number here. Right? I know in, in Australia also there is a TV station called use a number, but that's the only case I see. But why we use these two numbers, channel five, channel eight? Have you think about this? Anyone anyone knows? If you don't look at the kilos. Oh, have you have you asked yourself this question before? No. Okay. Okay. So for local Singaporean, all right. After this lecture, go back to ask your parents. <laughs> this is because in South Asia, Asia, the spectrum in this broadcasting band has been planned together. Has been planned together, and there's some channel assigned to. Certain countries. For example, in Singapore, this channel is assigned to Singapore. This channel is assigned to Singapore. It happens that the index this channel uses this number. Yeah. This one is indexed by five. This one is indexed by eight. That's why. That's why. That's why it's called channel five and channel eight. So people may wonder why not we go to why we don't have a channel six? Because six and eight consider is a good number, right? I don't know. This for this part, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so you know, because this uh, TV channel allocation in Southeast Asia and the channel indexed by five and channel indexed by eight are allocated to Singapore. Okay, so that's why these two channels main. Channel 5 and Channel 8. Okay. Another reason, uh, another problem, you see, the difference between the two channels. How many pairs between? Seven. Seven. But just now, what we see, this signal only has, spectrum has six megahertz. Now, why you separate these two signals by seven? This is because all this animal signal are, although we say its bandwidth are in this frequency range, but it doesn't mean that there's no dispersion to its neighbor channel here. Generally, they are still got some spectrum over here. Okay, so this extra one megahertz is used as a guard band. Okay, used as guard band. 
if anybody else wants to use this one like this, most probably you will get a lot of interference from this TV program channel. Okay, so that's why, although the each channel only got six megahertz, you still got a difference of six megahertz. Okay. All right. So after all, we learn so many signals. We take so many troubles. Now we know that actually they are useful in our daily life. Right? This knowledge is useful in our daily life. Okay? So, as we mentioned just now, although the signal benefit for a TV program is only 6 megahertz, but we still need to separate by 7 megahertz. The reason is because this TV program still got some dispersion to its neighbor channel. And sometimes, and in most of the time actually, this guard band, one extra one megahertz, is not enough. It's not enough yet. We still need to some way to restrict your chain, your signal in within this six megahertz. This technology is called filtering. Filtering. Okay. So we can see, for example, this is a signal from one channel, uh, from one communicate pair. This is from another user. To this user, this signal actually is an interference. Okay, if I have a de detector, I detect all the signal as my receive signal. Then it turns out that the receive signal is going to be very noisy. I cannot tell what's the message embedded in this part. Okay, so it's obvious that I cannot receive of all signal. One solution is like this. If I apply a filter before I detect the signal from the channel, that means I ask the signal from the channel go through a filter first, then I detect the output, I detect the message from the output of this filter. In this case, if I want to detect the signal from this one, I can apply a low pass filter like this. Of course, this is the ideal case. All right. So I apply a low pass filter, I suppress this part, and allow this part to go through it. Okay? So at the output of the low pass filter, only the spectrum from this signal. Okay, the signal from this spectrum actually already minimized. That means the interference to me is already minimized. Okay, so it's good that we have some filter here. <coughs> okay. It's obvious that there are three types of filter. Alright? Low pass, you got low pass, you must have a high pass. Okay? The other kind of filter is band pass here. Okay. In ideal case, for low pass filter, we must define its cover frequency on the FCC here. Okay? So you, you need to allow the signal from zero to on the FCC go through the system. Okay? Similar for high pass filter. And for band pass filter, you define two color of this. One is at the low end, the other one is at the upper end. Okay? So those are the case. Okay, if this is if this kind of filter can be implemented, everything software beautiful. We are done. So I will go home for it. But unfortunately, it's not. That's why we call it idea filter here. Right? Unfortunately, it's why? Why is not feasible? The idea filter, why the idea filter is not feasible? You can look at this case. Okay, let's say we have a rectangle function in the previous domain. Okay, we have a rectangle function in the previous domain. Then its time domain waveform is supposed to be, do you, do you still remember? Yeah. Rect function, is for transport pair should be a sync function, right? Okay. So for in time domain, this is the previous domain, right? Because our, all our future is talking about the previous domain here. Okay. So we have this rectangle house in the previous domain. Its corresponding time domain waveform is like this. And we know that this waveform starting from minus infinity and extend to positive infinity. So basically, what's the consequence? 
If you want to implement such a filter, means that I have to process the output signal in the time domain from time minus infinity all the way to post infinity. So it turns out that useless because nobody is going to use her whole life to filter a signal, right? From my time minus infinity to, to time post infinity, this will use a whole life. And if, even a whole life is not enough yet. So it turns out that useless. That's one reason. The other reason, you see, in time domain, time zero is here. Means that even before the system receive anything, this signal already happens here. That's impossible. Because this is a, becomes a non cautious system, right? And we know that non cautious system basically cannot be implemented. Alright? If it can be implemented, people can get, have a guess about the signal from here. Right? Because you don't know what happened before time zero. Okay, so such kind of system, first one, the last of all, infinite time. Second one, it physically is infinite. It's non partial right? So this kind of system actually physically cannot be implemented. It's useless. Okay, so we have defined, so what we, we have defined such a for low pass, band, high pass, and band pass filter. Many, many tells me it's useless. So what do we can do? Okay. Don't worry, we are engineers. We are supposed to solve the problem. We are supposed to solve those un impossible problems. We are not like a scientist. Scientists always give us very beautiful solution, but they don't worry about the implementation. No matter how complicated it is, they don't worry about it. But for engineers, we try to make it real. We try to solve this problem, although sometimes we use estimation like this. Okay? The reason why this idea filter cannot be implemented, implemented is because the transition region here. Yeah. For idea filter, they don't have any transition region. They just drop to zero at count frequency. <coughs> it is this problem, it is this drop to zero cause the problem. Okay? Cause the problem. For practical low pass filter, for example, in case, you will see instead of drawing zero at once, they are rolling off slowly. They were rolling off slowly. This type of filter physically can be implemented. Okay, that's very good. At least we have some solution for a filter. For example, low pass filter. Although it's not idea like this one, like the idea one will draw to zero at once. Okay, at least you can solve the problem somehow by some kind of estimation here. Alright, so of course we haven't talked about how to implement this kind of filter, but at least we know that because now we are looking back, right? We know that there's some kind of circuit physical, physically is feasible and give us a transfer function like this. Okay. Although this one is not ideal filter, but more or less can help us to suppress the signal in this band. Okay? But wait a minute, there are some other factors how can we map it back? For example, for ideal case, <coughs> we have a color of frequency, right? The color of frequency is just according to the point, the, the spectrum drop to zero, right? This is the color of frequency. But for this type of filter, how can you define a color frequency? The never drop off to zero at once, right? How can you define color frequency? Okay, one way to define the color frequency using three dB cutoff points means that if the maximum amplitude of this transduction is one, when you drop to three dB point. The corresponding frequency was considered as the cutoff frequency. All right, cutoff frequency. In other words, from zero for low pass case, from zero <coughs> to this point is going to be the pass band of this low pass filter. Okay. Then my next question is that what three dB? 
What's the meaning of 3dB here? And why I don't put a 3dB instead of putting a 0 0.707 here? Why? Because it's possible. Actually, we talked about this in the signals. Remember? We define 3dB bandwidth, right? Why? Yeah, half power. Yeah, very good. Because this point, the amplitude of, of this point is 1 over square root of 2, which is 0 0.707. Once over square root of 2, if you take square, becomes half, right? That means when the power, okay, here is the amplitude only, right? You take square here, become power. So when the upper power drop to half, and the corresponding frequency is considered as a cover frequency of this filter. Okay? There's half power points. And the band corresponding bandwidth is considered as 3 dB bandwidth. Okay? And why is it called 3 dB here? Yeah. It's because if you, if you can calculate the dB value for 0 0.5, you will see it's minus 3 point something. Right? That's why we call it GDB bandwidth. Okay. Of course, uh, this is just one <coughs> filter can be implemented. Okay. There are actually there are different ways to design filter. Like I show you here, the Butterworth filter design, the Chap Chap filter design, and also elliptic filter design, and many others actually. Different. What's different? Different technology design filter. For example, for Barlow's filter design, generally it has a very flat top here. The pass band is very flat. Mm -hmm. Well, the volume of region will last for a long frequency range. So the good thing is that this part is flat. Why is it good? If you have some filter, give you some records over here. Means that for different frequency, it will give you different gains. This is not ideal because it will introduce extra distortion for your signal. So the ideal case is like this. I have a flat tall here, I and my I will roll it off very fast. That's what <coughs> I I cannot ask for all the benefits, right? Use follow filter, you got a flat top and this rolling off region becomes slower. Whereas chapter filter, this rolling off filter uh, roll off region is very fast. It means it will drop to zero faster than Butterworth filter. But it's tall, got some ripples here. Then for elliptic filter, you will trade off. They have a small ripples compared with the chap chap, and it has a slower roller off region compared with chap chap, but faster than Butterworth. Okay, so there's some difference. This technique, yeah, yeah, last one for elliptic filter, right? Yeah. It just trade off this bubble filter and chap chap filter. It has smaller recall compared to chap chap, but you are going off lower than chap chap in transition region. Yeah. All this field design technology can be applied for passive filter design or active filter. Active filter means that in, the field, in your circuit you have some uh, op-amps. Whereas for passive filter, it's simpler. It's simpler. You only have the L, R, and R <coughs> in your filter. Okay? All right. We look at the bubble filter design as an example. Okay? As you mentioned just now, we have a flat top. It has a flat top, okay. Ah, uh, I think you need to. I need to remove this X here. I don't know why I put the X here. Okay. <coughs> but this type of filter has a has a slow rolling off region because because the rolling off here is the phenomenon we don't want. Remember, ideal case we have brick wall. Okay. For example, for the low pass filter, we have a brick wall here. That's ideal case. So, I try to design filter such that it's close to the ideal case. You have a flat top, 
So, and it will drop off to zero very fast, that's the idea case. But we cannot implement it because it's physically, it's invisible, okay? And for bottle filter, its transfer function actually can be modeled by using <coughs> this equation. You can model by using this equation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we, we don't bother to derive this equation, all right? We don't, we don't bother to derive this equation because, because it's many times, uh, many years ago. Okay, I, I don't think it's, it will give you some benefits to derive this. We just look at the property of this equation. That'd be more useful for us. Okay. Now you see, there's one parameter here, n. Omega is just a frequency, right? Just a frequency, the variable. But we have a parameter n here. Okay, let's try a different n. Where n <coughs> equals to one, we have this red dotted line here. This is the, this is the, uh, and spectrum <coughs> for the bottle filter for n equals to one. Where n equals to two, we have this one over here. Actually, it's not very obvious. I think your lecture notes is obvious, right? For the second one, I think it's over here. Okay. Then for n equals to three, the green one here. And n equals to four, we have this one. Okay. So we can see when n increase. It's become more and more closer to the idea case, right? More and more close to the idea case, this brick wall here. Yeah. <coughs> this first thing, the first observation. Second observation. The return actually diminishes when n increase. Compare this one and the second order. The gain is a lot of gain, right? From here to here. Become quite close to the idea case already. Well, compared with this one and this one, a equals two and three, the difference is smaller. All right. So this two even smaller. So the return is diminution means that you can increase n normal. The trend is like it will becomes more and more closer to the idea case. But improvement becomes smaller and smaller. That means the improvement, it becomes less and less effective <coughs> when increase n. Okay, less and less effective when increase n. Okay, so since our problem already solved, okay, since our problem already solved, we can increase n so the filter becomes quite close to the ideal case. Although the ideal case is invisible, now I can increase my n such that it's quite close to the idea case. <coughs> <coughs> then to problem solve again, right? But n has some constraint here. Because n is called the order of this filter. It's called the order of this filter. And the number of n means that the number of inductor and capacitor in your circuit. For example, for this case, A equals to 4 means that you must have <coughs> 4 A and C in your filter. Compared with the only one component, that means neither A or C. So which one is simpler? Of course, A equals to 1 is simpler, right? A equals to 1 is simpler. Simpler in the sense of low cost of the component and low cost of the maintenance. <coughs> The cost nowadays, L and C is quite, is quite cheap already, so the cost is not a big issue. But the maintenance cost is a big issue. Just imagine, you have, you have three components in your, in your filter, you have 100 components in your filter. So which one costs more for the maintenance? <coughs> maintenance means that once there's one component broken, how are you going to fix it? You would want to fix a system with three components or 100 components. Of course, three components is easier, right? So, when A increase, of course, the performance increase in more close to the ideal case. But the cost is that the maintaining cost will increase a lot. Okay? 
The good is that when A increase, the rolling R becomes faster, and we can derive that the rolling R actually can be estimated by 20 times N dB per decade. Okay, dB, no problem. dB is just the, the intensity, right? The measurement of intensity. So what is decade? <coughs> what is decade? Okay, from one to one hundred, how many decades away? Two. Two. Ten. Are you Five. sure? Five. Five. From one to one hundred, how many decades away? Two or five? Or, or ten? From 1 to 100 is 1 decade away. From 1 to 10 is 1 decade away. From 1 to 100 is 2 decades away. From 1 to 1000 will be 3 decades. Okay. Then from 20 to 200, how many decades away? From 2, 10, 2 to 20. So you see the frequency range <coughs> from one to ten, okay, from one to ten, you will decay by twenty times n in this plot. Okay, this is a slope, the slope of this curve here. Okay. So one thing must be careful. This curve is not straight line. It's not straight line. Even you measure the rolling of rate. You must look at the linear region. Okay? You don't look at this corner point here and here. Look at this linear region here. Okay? This linear region will rolling off at 20 times n dB per decade. Okay? And this measurement only applies to this portion. <coughs> Not try to measure the rolling off at this portion. Okay? At this portion, the amplitude spectrum never rolling off. Okay? Yeah. This 10 times n dB is only applicable to a linear region. Yeah. This will measure how close of your filter to the ideal case. The faster the volume off, the better. All right? Yeah. OK, now we have a concept of a, look of a power filter already. Now, next step, we look at how can we design this technique is quite interesting. All the filter design, no matter it's low pass or high pass or band pass, all this kind of filter we starting from a low pass prototype. In other words, no matter what kind of filter you're going to design, I mean by the words of course, all right? You're starting from a low pass prototype. Okay, so what's a low pass prototype? <coughs> Okay, low pass prototype is considered a low pass filter with color frequency y radians per second. Okay, now radians per second, not hertz. Okay, not hertz. One radians per second. And the source impedance and load impedance are both one ohm. And we assume that the matching already done. Okay, the match was already done. In other words, we assume. The circuit input output already matched. Okay, so this is the low pass prototype assumption. Okay, then we can construct low pass prototype based on these two construction. Okay, shaft capacitor construction and serial inductor construction. Okay, here this RS is a source impedance. RF is a load impedance. Okay, so actually for the filter itself, only including this portion. Exclude this one, this one, and this one. Okay? Only include the L and C here. Same for this one, only include L and C here. Okay, so starting from here, and this pattern is going to repeat again and again. So this 
if you look at this portion of this section, it looks like a pie, right? Am I right? If you look at this G1, G2, and G3, it looks like a pie, right? Am I right? And this pattern will repeat. If you look at G1, G2, and G3, this is looking like a T, right? Am I right? The T, right? So the first configuration, sometimes it's also called pi type. Second configuration, sometimes it's called T type. Okay. Yeah. So we have these two configurations. Then, uh, one more thing is that we don't have value yet. Although, although we know that here supposed to have a capacitor, here supposed to have an inductor, here supposed to have an LA capacitor. Okay, we know the structure already. But how about the component <coughs> value? We don't know yet. So how to find the component value? Of course, there's some algorithm to find it. The result actually is given here. So GK is computed by this equation. Okay, GK is computed by this equation. You just simply assign, assign function. Okay, you can use your computer or whatever to find this value. Or if you don't want to use this one, you have this table. We have this table here. Okay. You can find when a equals to one, okay, we have g1 only. Alright? Because you can see where n where at the most n components here. N L and C is here. Okay? Say for example, if n equals to three, we have g1, g2, and g3. No more g4 if n equals to three. Okay? Same for this one, g1, g2, g3. Okay. That's why in this table you only can you only see half of the <coughs> elements here. For this portion, you don't have anything. Because when n equals to one, you only have one value, right? You only only got one component. So why is it now here? If you have n equal to two, you have two components. That's why you have g1, g2 here. Alright, and so on. So you have this G1, G2, G3, and G4. The next step, you need to map this GI to different components. Whether the unit in radians, or in invariant, <coughs> or inherent. Because it can be capacitor, it can be inductive. Depends the configuration, right? Let's see here. Although for this configuration, G1 is capacitor. Well, for this configuration, G1 is an inductor. So you have to interpret your GI into a correct component, okay? So when case component, uh, once you fix your configuration, then case component is an inductor, then it's inductor GK current. If it is a capacitor, so if it's capacitor, it's GK current. Okay, so now the structure is clear and the value is clear. So you can construct this kind of circuit. Okay, you can construct your circuits for a low path prototype. Okay, so in this way, we can construct a low path prototype. This low path prototype <coughs> has a color frequency of one radian per second, and the source <coughs> load impedance of four watt ohm. Okay, and the pattern and the pattern can be pi type or t type. Okay. And also the order of the component, you need to be careful. Okay, it comes like this. This is considered as G1. This is considered G2. This is considered as G3 for this configuration. Similar, this is considered G1, G2, and G3. You cannot apply G1 for this component, G2 to this component, and G3 to this component. All right, be careful about this ordering. All right. Question for the com two configuration because once a is given, say for a equals to three, that means for third order low pass filter, you have two implementation because you can choose either configuration, right? So is there any difference between these two configuration? What's different if I choose pi type or choose t type? 
actually the same in terms of uh, its transfer function. Remember just in, in the beginning, I say that if the two system has the same transfer function, from the perspective of single process, I cannot distinguish these two. I consider these two systems are same. Although inside, maybe they are in very different ways. Okay, so this is a typical example. You can implement it as third order no pass filter, either use pi type or t type. But from the transfer function perspective, there's no difference. Actually, you can verify this in your second lab. Okay, you can verify this in your second lab. <coughs> you can use different configuration, then you can see actually the transfer function, the transfer function actually is the same. Okay. All right, uh, just now we're talking about the low pass prototype. We say that the low pass prototype is cut off frequency just one radians per second. And its mass unit is just one ohm. But in practical case, in practical case, one radians per second cut off frequency actually is, is not very useful, right? We're talking about four kHz for voice signal. We're talking about at least 100 megahertz for video, video signal. Now you tell me you only can design a future with one million per second kind of frequency. So actually it's not useful. Now why we still need to look at the past prototype? We have a vision that sometimes we, we want to design a high pass instead of a low pass. Sometimes we want to design a band pass instead of a low pass. Right? Actually it's useful. Why? Because all this type of future can be transformed from the low power prototype. In other words, first step, we, no matter you design a practical low pass, practical band pass, practical high pass, you study from a low pass prototype first. Once you've got a low pass prototype, you can map in the parameter to the practical future. For example, here. Let's say we have a low pass prototype which is kind of because of one million per second, okay? Then we got a sequence of L and C depends the, the configuration, okay? Pi type or D type. Then on this circuit, if I want to find a low pass filter, this kind of frequency is omega C, <coughs> omega C other than one million per second. Okay, let's say omega C now is 100 million per second. So how can I get this practical low pass filter from the low pass prototype I have? Let's say third order, third order, and uh, pi type. Okay, pi type first component is a capacitor, right? So the first component is capacitor. I need to change it to another capacitor. This is capacitors. C over omega C, 100 radians now. Okay, C divided by 100 radians. Okay, originally it's just G1, right? G1. Now it becomes G1 over 100. Second component for third order, pi type, is an inductor, right? Okay, this time this inductor must be changed also. It's still be an inductor, but it, it, its inductors must be reduced by 100 times again. So original L, this is G2 for third order, right? G2 must divide by 100. Okay. For third component, <coughs> should be a capacitor again, okay, for pi type. Then this capacitor also needs to be replaced by another capacitor with its capacitors divided by 100. So if I replace all the components on this component on this circuit with a new value, then I can get another low pass filter with its color frequency 100 radians per second. Okay, that's good, that's good. At least I solved my problem, right? If you ask me to decide a low pass filter with color frequency 100 radians per second, I can start to design a low pass prototype first. I can figure out G1, G2, and G3, for example, right? Let's say if N equals to 3. Then I can map in the component to the practical one by using this table. Okay?
Similarly, you can design five paths, but this time we need to change the component type. Also, the value. <coughs> for example, originally even in the no plus prototype, it is an inductor. Then we need to replace this inductor to a capacitor, and this value also needs to be modified. Okay, also needs to be modified. Same for the capacitor. Originally it is capacitor. Now we need to replace it by inductor and modify the parameter. Okay, so then we can get the high pass filter with a cutoff frequency omega C here. Okay, omega C radius per second. The typical type, a uh, typical problem is for the band pass here. For band pass case, for band pass case, not only to replace the component, okay, not just replace this component by another component, we need to replace this inductor by a series of an inductor and a capacitor, and uh, also modify the value here. Okay, band pass. It's a little bit complicated. For capacitor in the low pass prototype, if you want to design a corresponding band pass, you need to replace this capacitor by a parallel of a capacitor and inductor, and also change this value. Okay? Yeah. Since I haven't shown you how to derive this table, so you don't need to worry about it. Okay? You don't need to worry about it. In the exam, we are talking about this file, this kind of problem, this table is given. Okay. The important thing is that we need to know how to use this table. Okay. <coughs> okay, another thing I need to remind you guys is that although I can transform a low pass prototype to a practical low, low pass, practical high pass, practical band pass with a different color frequency, other than one radius per second. <coughs> I still have an assumption that the match impedance for practical low pass, band pass, and high pass are still one ohm, okay, still one ohm. Then, then you will ask me, what happens if the match impedance is not one ohm anymore? How can we do the mapping? How can we do the mapping? This, the solution for this question is in your lab menu for your lab tube. Okay, you check this on the lab tube. That's why you need to go through the lab menu, not just jump to the question, all right? Go through the lab menu. It will show you the solution for this type of problem. When the match impedance are not one ohm, then how do you match this component? Okay? All right, so here's the steps. For a low pass, for a low pass uh, filter design, okay. Generally, the parameter given is like this: the color frequency, okay. Of if you're talking about the uh, band pass, then you must have a two color frequency, right? And otherwise, a transition rate and the transition region, okay. So how fast it will rolling off? Because this will determine the order n. Remember that the rolling off rate is 20 times n dB, right? So if the rolling off rate is given in the question, then you can determine your minimum number of n, all right? Uh, and otherwise, a source and load impedance, okay? <coughs> if the source and load impedance are other than one ohm, then you must be careful. Okay, so how to start design? The first step, we need to determine the order n according to the attenuation rate given. Okay. This attenuation rate, you, in other words, the order you choose, I mean the n you choose, 20 times n must greater than this attenuation rate. <coughs> okay. So to solve this inequality, you can find that minimal n value. Why we choose that minimal n value? Later we will see. Okay. So by using this really, this parameter, you can determine the n, okay, once n is given, or once n is fixed, then you can design a low pass prototype of all the n, okay, you can choose either configuration, high or t, whatever, okay, if there's no requirement, says you must use high or you must use t, 
then you choose either of them. Okay. Then you can find the value <coughs> GK for this n component because for all the n filter you have the n components. That means n, l, and c, right? So for each of them, you can find the parameter by using this equation, or you can check from the table. Okay. Now, if you find, you determine that you try to use the pi type, okay, so you might mapping this gk to the proper value, should be Farad or Henry. Okay, depends the configuration. Let's say you just use pi type, mm -hmm. then the first one must be g1 Farad, right? Second one must be g2 Henry, because second one is an inductor in the pi type. Okay, and so on. Then, most important step, you must verify the result by checking the, the plot of this one. Okay, checking the result by looking at the plot of this one. Because in your simulation, the software can easily give you this, this parameter. Okay, you need to know how to do it. <coughs> All right. Okay, let's see some example. <coughs> Okay, for this example, we are going to define a practical low pass filter. All right. Assume that max impedance is just one ohm. Okay. Then design a low pass filter such that its cutoff frequency four kHz, and the power attenuation at forty hertz, forty kHz is forty dB with respect to four K. That means that means from four K to forty K it must attenuate by 40 dB, okay? Now, I ask you, from 4K to 40K, how many decades are there? Okay, so, how to integrate this sentence? Means that, tells you, I ask for a volume of rate at the least 40 dB per decade. Am I right? No. Am I right? Yeah, so this, how we interpret this parameter? Okay, so now I need to pick out n first. So 20 times n times number of decades from 4k to 40k must greater or equal to 40. Make sense? The result and the role of uh, attenuation, okay, the result of attenuation must greater than 40 dB, right? This is the requirement. Okay? Then here, 20 times n is the volume of rate. Okay? This one is how many decades away from 4k to 40k. Am I right? From 4k to 40k, this is how many decades away. Okay? This is the roll of rate times number of decade. Okay, this gives me the total attenuation, right? Total attenuation. This total attenuation must be equal to this 40 dB here. Am I right? This is the requirement. Okay. You agree? Agree? Any questions about this part? Okay, good. So solve this inequality, I can get n equal to two. I can get <coughs> n equal to two. Of course, I can choose n equal to three, right? If n equal to three, then 16 times one equal to 16. 16, of course, is greater or equal to 40. Of course, satisfy my requirement, right? I can choose n equal to three, that's good. But whether this is optimal. If I just choose n equal to 3, means that I need to use 3 L and Cs. So it will increase my cost in terms of 
component cost, internal to maintain cost. Now you tell me A equal to two is already satisfied my requirement. Then why I need to take a high cost approach, right? I don't need to take a high cost approach. So I can use N equal to two, that's good enough already. Right? You can use N equal to three also, or It satisfies the requirement. It satisfies the requirement. But it's not necessary. And it's not optimal. Okay? Alright, so solve this inequality. Define the minimum and satisfy this equality. Then you can fix your N. Alright? Okay, another question. <coughs> if I solve N is equal to 2.1, Okay, n equal to 2.1. Oh, in other words, n must greater or equal to 2.1. So how can I choose n? Why? Why not? I cannot choose n equal to 2.1. Can right? If n equals to 2.1, then I have 41, uh, 42 here. And you don't have 2.1 Yes. Very good. Very good. Because this n is the order, right? The order means the number of L and C. Because you cannot have a 2.1 n, this L and C, right? N must be integer. Okay? Yeah. All right, so we can choose, for this example, we can choose n equal to two, that's optimal one. Because this is the minimal n satisfy our requirement. All right? Then, means that for my low pass product, I have two components, two LMCs. Okay, and then I have two parameters, G1 and G2. And for order equals to two, it happens that these two components have the same value, which are both square root of two. Okay, yeah, this is just coincidence. Okay, just coincidence. You cannot generate this to all the end, all right? This just happened for A equal to two, okay? <coughs> Then uh, we need to transform. This is just a parameter for low pass prototype. Okay, means that the color frequency for these two parameters, uh, uh, color frequency for the low pass prototype with these, these two parameters is only one radius per second. Whereas in our case, it must be four k hertz. Okay. Right. <coughs> so we need to transform our parameter. <coughs> But first step, we need to find the cutoff frequency, the practical low pass with the cutoff frequency in radius per second. Okay, this is very important. This is very important. Because in the past year exam or quiz, we see a lot of people just bring the hertz. Can I use hertz? You must use the radius per second. Means you need to time, time your cutoff frequency by two pi here. Okay, so we roughly got 25 k radius per second. Okay, 25 k radius per second. <coughs> then you transform these two parameters, means it divide these two parameters by 25 k. Okay, 25 k. Then we have, if you're talking about, if you're talking about pi pi, okay, pi pi here. Then G1 is a capacitor, G2 is an inductor, all right? So the corresponding value is this one and this is talking about pi pi. If you want to choose your T pi, then first one is a inductor, second one is a capacitor. Okay, the corresponding value is like this. Okay? Yeah. So for this one, this two, you can choose either of them. They have the same transfer function. Okay, they have the same transfer function. So next step, we need to verify. Okay, verify, I plot the transfer function. The, the power transfer function is this one. And then I can see that it's cut off from C corresponding 3 dB at this point, which is 4 k hertz. Okay, then in the linear region over here, you see from this point to this point, it's one decade away. All right, I think your national is more clear because we need project to here. Because we can look at the lecture notes. 
Yeah, from this point to this point, actually it's one decade away, all right? And this point, the corresponding frequency is four kilohertz. Okay, how do you see this is four kilohertz? How do you see this is four kilohertz? This is one K, right? This point is one K. This is two K, three K, and four K. Okay. Notice that they're not even. You see, they're not even. Okay, they're not even. Okay, so you need to verify two things in your lab. First one, color frequency. Second one, volume of ray. That means the slope of this volume region. Okay, you need to look at the linear region. You cannot look at this region. This region definitely is not 40 dB. Okay, definitely is not 40 dB. Okay? <coughs> Uh, this one, okay, this one, I need you to solve it first. We will talk about this one next time, next week, all right? Uh, this was all for <coughs> today. Any question about today's lecture? Any questions? Okay, you divide this one by 35K. This is come from here, from here to here. Yeah. Transform from low pass contact to a practical low pass filter. Yeah. yeah, correct. Volume of grade exists uh, also the uh, name for the condition. Any other questions?